Well, our guest today has been called a modern day Job. He's an animator, a speaker, and a songwriter, but first and foremost, Terry Posthumus is a storyteller, and he's here to share his story of pain and hope. Welcome, Terry. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Ah, oh, it's great to be here. Yeah, so, okay, you write this great book, Acquainted with Sorrow, but my question to you is what inspired you to write a book with that title? Well, you know, it's one of those things, right? I mean, um, I had a working title for a long time, but then when we sat down and we looked at it, we're like, you know, um, there are a lot of people that have experienced a lot of different kind of sorrows, especially over the last two and a half years. I mean, let's face it, um, you know, sorrow's been around as long as we have, but um, we kind of felt like we needed to capture the reader's attention right off the bat and with something that they would be able um, to relate with. But then we also said in the title that it is when life seems like the worst is yet to come. And, um, and so there's also like not this, I guess, um, this permanence of sorrow, but also this thinking forward, looking forward, and um, yeah, just wanting to move out of that and into hope and move people into that. And of course, we're using story to do that. Right. Well, and I, and I love that word acquaintance because it's almost like a familial term. It's like something I, I know because I am actually living in it or have experienced it. And you've experienced a lot of pain and loss in your life. And so can you talk us a little bit about that and how this has actually shaped who you are today? Well, you know, I want to first say, you know, I, I understand that everybody does have their, their thing, that everybody does have their sorrow. Um, what's kind of unique about my story is that it has seemed to come in wave after wave. Right. And, and I don't mean to make light of that at all. I mean, um, you know, it is literally like from the time I was a very young child to now, um, you know, I've experienced sorrow and hope and um and seeing those things happen whether it was the loss of my father as a very young boy um or the loss of uh, children or my wife or my dream home um and, and all for various and different reasons um there have been all of these things that have happened in my life and yet hope has abided hope has been that common thread through that keeps me smiling, that keeps me testifying, that keeps me worshiping. And, uh, and that's kind of the whole point. And really, I mean, at the end of the day, you could say, well, boy, that guy's got a sad story. And I would say, no, 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 I've got a hopeful story. Um, and that's really, you know, that's the bottom line for me. Yeah, well, I think that you hit a really key point. Because I think when you lose hope, you literally lose everything. You get lost yeah, in the despair, darkness, yeah. right? And so um, I think hope is a huge part of the Bible. It's a huge part of your story. So for those who are watching this right now, maybe they feel like they've lost hope. Maybe like you, they've experienced incredible loss, almost like unbearable loss on the surface. How can mm. they find hope? How have you found it? And how can they navigate the darkness of sorrow? Sure. You know, I mean, the answer is very simple. <clears throat> it's Jesus. Hmm. You know, at the end of the day, that is the linchpin. That's the pivot point of my life. You know, and, and here's the thing. Hope isn't like just a wish, right. you know, and it, it, it isn't just like, you know, like we we hope to the stars that, you know, that things are going to turn around. No, it doesn't work like that at all. As a matter of fact, hope is a gift. It's a gift that we celebrate at Advent which I've talked about before. It's one of the things that we have, and it's hope is like earnest expectation that God will do and ha what he said he would do and that he has done what he, will, what he said he would do. Um, but it's also a gift because like in Romans um, 5, verse 1 to 11, you know, Paul talks to the Romans, and one of the things that he says that we, give, that we get as a gift when we have faith in Jesus is hope. And so because it's a gift and the way that God gives gifts to us, he, he doesn't set limits on them. And so I would say to the person that is struggling with despair, like what a word, you know, when you don't have that reason to get up anymore, um, you know, when it's that one, that one thing too many, that it's not based on your circumstances, it's based on Jesus. I find my hope in my faith in Jesus 
and it's given to me as a free gift. So I'm not hoping that things will get better. Mm -mm. My hope is in Christ. Oh, I, That's I, just, I, I, I love that. I, I love the idea of a gift because a gift is something you actually have to pick up. You have to receive. You have to take it. Right? Yeah, I yeah. love that because a lot of people I think think of sorrow and hope as maybe feelings or circumstance or situation, something outside of me. But what you're talking about, I mean, and I that's, love it. Yeah, it's that's in, wishing, right? Yes. That's, that's yeah. the empty hope that this world offers. So, okay, mm -hmm. just really quick. We have only a few moments left, but as people are reading your book, um, how, how will you help them navigate how to pick up this gift and live in it? Well, you know, I mean, I don't have hope because I'm strong or clever. <laughs> I, and so what I have is my stories, right? These are the things that I've gone through. And these are the times and, and the places and the ways that I have either clung to hope or hope has ca caught me like a safety line. Right. And, um, you know, you know, it's and you're right. You're absolutely right. It is a choice that we make to take that gift, you know, and, and we can, you know, stay behind the curtains of despair. Or we can throw them open and let the sun shine in and we can say, OK, look, I can't do this on my own. Yeah, but I, with you, mm -hmm. I can do everything and I can pick up and move on. I love that. Thank you so much for being with us here today. And My for those, pleasure. Yeah, for those of you watching, if you want to find out more about Terry and his book, Acquainted with Sorrow, just visit us at 700club.ca and you can get all the information there. Thanks again for being here, Terry. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. Be filled with hope. You got it. Yes, you too. <laughs>